As the rod swings down, its potential energy decreases and its kinetic energy increases. Since the pivot is frictionless, there is no work done by friction. Right, so let's consider the total initial mechanical energy. We'll take the zero position of potential energy to be the initial height of the rod when it is horizontal. So therefore, the total initial mechanical energy will be just zero. Let's consider the total final mechanical energy when the rod has rotated into the vertical position. The final kinetic energy is just its rotational kinetic energy, which is a half I omega squared. And the final potential energy is equal to minus mg ycm, where ycm is the distance moved by the center of mass of the rod. So that is just equal to L over 2. So that's minus mg L over 2, where L is the length of the rod. The total final mechanical energy is therefore equal to a half I omega squared minus mg L over 2. By the conservation of mechanical energy, therefore, the total final mechanical energy must be equal to the total initial mechanical energy. And therefore, a half I omega squared minus mg L over 2 is equal to 0. Rearranging that equation, we get that omega, the angular velocity, is equal to the square root of the mass of the rod, m, times g, times l, the length of the rod, divided by its moment of inertia. The moment of inertia for a rod pivoted at one end is just equal to a third times the mass times its length squared. Substituting that into our previous equation for omega, we get that omega is equal to the square root of 3g over l after some simpl simplification. In order to find the force exerted by the pivot when the rod is vertical, we can start by drawing a free body diagram of the rod as it passes through the vertical position. The forces acting on the rod are the force of gravity acting at its center of mass. That is just mg. And the force of the pivot upwards, which we'll label Fp. Notice that the acceleration of the center of mass is vertically upwards at this stage. We now apply Newton's second law for a system of particles to the rod. The resultant external force on the system is just equal to the mass of the rod times its acceleration, or should I say the acceleration of its center of mass. At the bottom of the swing, the acceleration of the center of mass is its centripetal acceleration towards the center of the circle it is describing. So therefore, the acceleration of the center of mass is just equal to r omega squared. r, the radius of the circle which it's describing, is just equal to L over 2, where L is the length of the rod. And we can also substitute in for omega squared from our previous expression for omega in the first part of the question, where we said that omega was equal to omega squared was equal to 3g over L. And therefore, the acceleration of the center of mass is just equal to 3 over 2g. Applying Newton's second law, 
we have that the force of the pivot Fp minus Mg is equal to the mass of the rod M times the acceleration of the center of mass. Substituting for the center of mass acceleration of, as being equal to 3 over 2g, rearranging the equation, we get that the force at the pivot is equal to 5 over 2mg.